zoned out. He was, in, he was sleeping his life away. No motivation, nothing. Jonah was not moving. He was, although he was in motion, but his life was in a standstill. His life was in one position. I want you to realize how important it is that you should be moving. You should be walking, going towards the direction that God has for you. Jonah was going the opposite direction of his life. Have you been going the opposite direction of your life? Maybe because your friends have deceived you. Maybe it's cool to just hang out with your friends and just do what they're doing and just forget about life and just numb the pain and just, just keep moving. No. God wants you to live in your purpose. So God came back to Jonah after he'd been swallowed by a fish, by a whale, and vomited on the shore. He was now ready to listen. <laughs> Jonah was now ready to say, yes, God, will you give me a second chance? <laughs> I need a second chance, God. And we are told that the word of the, of, of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. God will keep reminding you of your purpose because that's where your happiness is. He will keep reminding you of your purpose because that's where your peace is. He will keep reminding you of your purpose because that's where your satisfaction, your joy is. God wants you to know that you can be rejoicing. You can be living a fulfilled life when you find out your purpose. Mm -hmm. He's the God of a second chance. He will show up again to you. No matter the pain that you've been through, no matter the frustration you've been facing, He will show up again to strengthen you, to raise you up. He will do everything to deliver you from the pain that you're suffering, from the, from the stomach of the whale. He will take you out of that situation and release you to fulfill your purpose. Purpose is why you didn't die in that fish. Purpose is why you survived that accident. Purpose is why why you are still alive today. Purpose is why that sickness didn't kill you. Purpose is why you are here today. Amen. Purpose defines your destiny. Your purpose defines your destiny. Your destiny is not by chance. Uh, Pastor, are you saying that, okay, everything for my life is planned out? Well, in God's plan, God didn't plan that Jonah would go to Tashish. And he got up and went to Tashish. And he suffered the consequences. Oh, okay, Pastor, are you saying that if I'm suffering something in my life is because I'm going the wrong direction? Maybe not. God told the church, the, Jesus told his disciples, get in the boat, go over to the other side. The moment they got in the boat and they're going over to the other side, the storms began to rage. Even when you're, you're fulfilling your purpose, you have challenges, you have storms, you have difficulties, you have pain. But if you know you are in your purpose, it's just going to be for a season. Yes. Yes. If you know you're in your purpose, it's not going to last forever. If you know you're in your purpose, you will stay the course. Because you have what it takes. You have what it takes. To go through any circumstance that faces you, that challenges you. You have what it takes to overcome the storm. You have what it takes to come out of the stomach of the world. You have what it takes. Even if you make a mistake like Jonah did, God is able to redeem your mistake. God is able to turn around your mistake. God is able to give you a second chance. Whatever has happened in your life, whatever situation you find yourself in, maybe abortion, whatever it is, maybe drug addiction, maybe alcoholism, maybe bad friends, maybe conviction, whatever it is, God is able to turn things around in your life. He is able. He says, for he makes all things work together for good to them that love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. Purpose. Your purpose defines your destiny. Your purpose will bring good to your life. Your purpose will bring victory. Your purpose will bring peace. Your purpose will bring satisfaction in your life. Saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it 
the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three day journey in, in extent. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Jonah fulfilled his destiny. He went to the city of Nineveh. He went to the place that God had designed him to go to. You know the result? Everybody in Nineveh began to fast and pray. Everybody in Nineveh came to the realization how important it is for them to listen to the voice of God, to live their lives according to God's standard. The story says that all of them got into fasting and prayer, including they said nobody is going to eat, even the pets, even the animals, nobody is going to eat. <laughs> and they fasted and God forgave them. You know the rest of the story. Jonah was angry and blamed God for being compassionate. So, <laughs> But his preaching was so effective. God reached out and convicted and changed the people of Nineveh. Amen. Because, because Jonah found his purpose, accepted to fulfill his purpose. God in the boat and went to where God wanted him to go. I want to encourage you this morning. Your purpose helps you to understand the direction of your life. <clears throat> Are you in a situation where you feel you're confused? You feel like nothing is working. You feel like you're stuck. Find out your purpose. When you find out your purpose, it will give you direction. It will point, it will be like a pointer showing you what you should do with your life. Your purpose creates motivation. We said in him we, we live and move and have our being. Have you lost motivation in your life? There's no momentum. Thoughts of suicide even plague your mind because you feel like, what's this life all about? No, you're worth something. You're valuable to God. It doesn't matter where you find yourself, what you're doing. It doesn't matter how people look at you. What's important is you have value, you have inherent worth. And God wants you to be motivated. God wants you to be moving. Find out your purpose. That's your greatest motivation in life. That's the reason you are alive. Your motivation is your why. Why are you alive? Purpose. Why are you here? Purpose. Why are you black? Purpose. Why are you white? Purpose. Purpose. Why are you a woman? Purpose. Why are you a man? Purpose. Your motivation is your purpose. Your purpose is meant to motivate you, to give fire in your bones, to stir you up, to be the driving force of your life when nothing is working. Purpose will cause you to move because you have a city, you have a city to save. Purpose. Your purpose defines your destination. Don't go to Tashish. <laughs> go to Nineveh. <laughs> Don't go back to Egypt. There's nothing there. Go to the promised land. That's what God has prepared for you. Purpose. If you want to understand how important it is, this is what Abraham Marshall said. The human need for self-actualization is just the desire to become what he can be. Do the things for which he was born. If the person does not satisfy the needs for self-actualization, his dissatisfaction and anxiety increases. Are you suffering from anxiety? Are you dissatisfied with life? Find out what you were born to do. Find out why you are alive. <clears throat> Find out why you are here. Purpose. Purpose. Your purpose requires action. Purpose.
It doesn't matter where you are born. Your purpose, your purpose, your purpose defines your destiny. Your purpose defines your direction. Your purpose is your greatest motivation. Your purpose will call out that action from you. When Jonah took action, he created a chain reaction of actions. That's what purpose does. I want to talk to us this morning about Benazi Bhutto. Benazi Bhutto, born in a Muslim country in Pakistan. And in Pakistan, women don't talk. Women don't have any rights. It's an Islamic country. Women are stripped of their identity from birth. They are considered second class. Third class or even fourth class citizen because a man, according to Islam, can have as many as four wives. But that did not define Benazi Bhutto. That did not define her life. She had the opportunity to attend Harvard University and graduated in 1973 with a bachelor's in public administration. In her youth, Benazi gave herself answer to the question, who am I and where am I going? This is her answer. I am the one who will restore a democratic government in my country and bring reforms to make my people's lives easier. Benazi worked hard, both emotionally and mentally, to get her mission accomplished. She demonstrated great courage. Being persecuted, repressed, and imprisoned, every single day she lived for her goal, doing everything she could for the well-being of her country. I want you to just share with you some of her accomplishments. She went ahead and she got into politics and she became the prime minister, the highest authority of Pakistan. And she was able to accomplish her goal, her purpose. You can discover your purpose because it's in you, even if you're not a Christian. It's in you. You're born with it. That brings satisfaction. So she became the Prime Minister of Pakistan and was able to bring reforms in her country. She organized national, nationalization of oil deposits and directed cash flows to the implementation of social programs. As a result of her reforms, illiteracy among the, the people of her country was reduced by one third. The epidemic of poliomyelitis was averted. Poor villages were connected to electricity and drinking water supply. In addition, she introduced free health care and education and increased budget expenses for this purpose. During the time of her administration, the total volume of external investment increased several times and the economic development rate in Pakistan was higher than in the neighboring India. These reforms of Benazi Bhutto were highly evaluated not only by Pas Pakistani people but across, across the globe. And that's why she was fe she featured in the Guinness Book of Record in 1996. That's why the United, the United Nations Human Rights gave her an award that's why the Libera International, she received the Libera Interna International Prize for Freedom in 1989. She had the Al Academy of Achievement mm -hmm. Award in 2000, and she was a member of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. Great people have great goals. Great people fulfill their purpose. They live for their purpose. They live to fulfill their destiny. I want to challenge you this morning again. A Muslim, she doesn't know God like you and me we do. She doesn't have a personal relationship with God. You and me, we have a personal relationship with God. Your purpose is 
why you're here. So what action are you going to take today to pursue your purpose? To go after your purpose. To pursue that reason why you're alive. What action are you going to take today? You may still go back to those goals and make sure you write something. Goals will define what your life will become. I want to challenge you this morning. I want to challenge us this morning that your purpose is that powerful. You are not an accident in this place. You are not an accident here on earth. You might have not grown up with your parents. You might have grown up in, foster, in a foster home. Well, I came to give you good news that it doesn't matter. You might not even be in, a, in, a, in an environment that you like. I came to tell you, your purpose is the reason why you're here. Your purpose is the reason you are alive. Your purpose is the reason why God gave you life. And like Jonah, when you fulfill your purpose, lives will be changed. When you pursue that purpose, lives will be changed. So this morning, I want you to, us to reflect as we sing this as we sing this song together. I want you to begin to reflect the action you're going to take today, today, to fulfill that purpose. What is the challenge you're facing in your relationship? What is the challenge you're facing in your life? What is the challenge you're facing right now? It could be finding your purpose can set you free from that pain. It could be finding your purpose can restore hope and victory. It could be finding your purpose will be that spark of motivation that you need to live again. That you need to dare. That you need to take risk again. If you know your purpose and you know you couldn't fail, why wouldn't you step forward? Why wouldn't you do something bigger than yourself? Why wouldn't you be challenged to rise up above your limitations? If you knew your purpose is bigger than yourself, why wouldn't you do something that is going to be a footprint in the sand of history? Purpose. Purpose.